let's go on to the next slide. So um, I just kind of wanted to give everyone a brief overview. You, some of you may not quite be familiar with Global Links Learning Abroad quite yet. Um, but you may be receiving some of our newsletters and um, some of our emails. Um, but who we are, uh, we are Global Links Learning Abroad, and we do uh, work with a variety of universities in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, um, including the University of Sydney, um, to help students apply for degree programs. Um, so we do have over almost nearly 25 years of experience sending students overseas, and um, we've been appointed by top-ranked universities um, in Australia, New Zealand and the UK to be your application center in North America. Um, and the nice thing is, is that we do provide free support and enrollment assistance. Um, and we have these great connections like Professor uh, or Associate Professor Kirsty Foster um, that can help us do these uh, great presentations. So I'm going to hand over the controls to Kirsty. So just one second, and then we will. Um, get started. Okay, thanks very much Kim. So I have control now of these slides. Uh, <laughs> maybe, well I'll, maybe I'll just start anyway. You just uh, start and then I'll, um, yeah. just tell me when to change yeah. the slide. We'll do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Thanks very much Kim. Um, and it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity to um, speak to you all about how to study medicine at the University of Sydney. If I can have the next slide, I'll just start. What I'm going to do is go through a few slides and um, explain the program, and then we'll take um, take questions, as Kim says. So, um, Sydney Medical School is was the first medical school in Australia. It's established, as you can see, in 1856. So we have a long, long history of teaching doctors, and um, we have. Um, 3,500 students in the medical school, and that includes our medical students and our postgraduate students. And we're ranked highly in all of the, um, the, the university ranking surveys, so 25th in the World Times Higher Education in clinical, preclinical, and health, and 17th in the world in the QS ranking. Next slide, please. So this is a really exciting time, and I know that all of you are interested, obviously, so you're probably aware of this. It's a really exciting time for um, medicine because healthcare is a really exciting team activity with the health workforce comprising lots of highly trained professionals that doctors can work with, nurses and other allied health professionals. The work, of course, is complex and challenging, which is why to be the best doctor you need the to, to be trained in, in a world-class medical program. Um, best practice 20 years ago is very different today. Our patients are much better informed. There's, everyone has access to um, a great amount of knowledge, and so that means that doctors have to be highly skilled in, in communication. Lot, and new, lots of new technology. Um, as you can see on the slide, all of these things are more imaging, telemedicine, microsurgery. And the speed of change and new discovery means that it's a really exciting career. Every day there are new things in every field. So it's a very rewarding career. Next slide. But some things stay the same. Doctors have always needed these attributes that are up on the slide. So clinical skills, including good communication, being able to manage the wealth of information and data around, to re but clinical skills to reach the correct diagnosis so that the, the best management plan can be worked out for patients. And of course, they also need to be highly skilled at procedures. Very important that um, doctors have compassion, an ethical attitude, empathy, and are able to solve problems and the broader sort of problems that patients bring. And, and that includes to be a good listener um, as well as being able to speak well and write well. So we are looking at, at Sydney Medical School, we are looking for all of those attributes in the beginnings of them and people that we take into the program and we want to develop those so that when they graduate they are excellent doctors. Next slide. 
So our vision is to, as you can see here, to develop graduates who are caring, clear thinking, clinically outstanding, of course, research capable and globally engaged. They have, a, uh, they have an idea of health in the world and that's why we are delighted to welcome lots of international students to our program. Next slide. So as I've alluded to already, these are the sorts of skills that our program specifically develops. Research and inquiry, all in our MD program, um, there's a major research component that I'll talk about later. We need to give students and doctors the skills to be information literate, to be able to handle the large amounts of um, information available, to be able to be independent and certainly intellectually auton autonomous, so, so critically think about what they're doing, why they're doing it in their practice. Of course, to have ethical, social, and professional understanding, um, and to be good communicators. Next slide. So, if we, if if they have these three things on this slide, an excellent clinical training, research experience, and an international outlook, then that's what we want a Sydney Medical School to have a reputation for turning out doctors who are well placed for the future of health and medical practice. Next slide, I'll just go through each of these. So excellent clinical training. Next. next yeah, next one, thanks. Can I have the next slide? Um, so we have, this is, um, this is a map of Sydney. I don't know if you can see my pointer on this, but this is the centre of Sydney. Um, and we have teaching um, hospitals at each of those red, red markers. So spread over a wide area, right, um, and we have a rural centre here and one off the picture out here. Um, so we have um, six metropolitan clinical schools, all based at large teaching hospitals in Sydney. And rurally in Double Orange, Broken Hill and Lismore, we also have um, centres. So our students have excellent clinical training in a variety of settings and that's really important to, to give the experience not just in a, in a tertiary teaching hospital but also in smaller metropolitan hospitals and out rurally so that students are very well grounded in a, the whole gamut of clinical conditions and clinical environments. Next slide. So, we have hundreds of great teachers and these pictures just show you um, a variety of settings. Obviously students get, uh, one of the great things about our program is that students have clinical experience right from the very first week of the medical program in year one. And that might be in the ward, talking to patients, um, comforting patients, obviously a first year medical student has minimal skills in, uh, in medicine. but they have the, um, the ability to start right from then, the, the first days of the program, developing their comforting skills, their just human skills in talking to patients, and that develops into learning how to take a medical history. And as they become uh, more experienced, they assist in surgeries, as you can see in that top picture there. And we're lucky that we have hundreds of great um, teachers in the program and based in the hospitals, the teaching hospitals around Sydney. These are some uh, new first year students uh, in their first week of the medical program being shown by the lady in the black top is a clinical skills teacher at one of our clinical schools and there these students are in the skills lab. As you can see there's a mannequin there and they all look slightly nervous but this is because it's their the first time they've seen this um, this setup and they're, I think they're raring to go really. Um, and for, during first year, second year, they have quite a lot of time in this skills lab learning the sorts of skills they need to do in a safe environment with um, mannequins such as this one. Next slide. And this again is, uh, as you can see, this is uh, again in the skills lab. And um, if you just click again, you'll get the next picture which is, um, this is a medical student learning, how, this is a second year medical student and he's practicing how to examine the eye 
so he's and he's being able to do that on a mannequin so that he can get his technique right with the ophthalmoscope you can see in his hand there uh, without worrying about the added complexity of talking to the patient who whose eye he's looking into so once he's comfortable in this on the mannequin in the skills lab then in third year and fourth year he'll be able to develop those skills with a real patient on the wall next slide So this is more procedures, so these are students learning how to take uh, blood pressures. On the left hand side, um, the student, this, this student is taking a blood pressure of one of his fellow students, um, so they practice on each other, which has the added advantage of course that they check that their own blood pressure is normal. Um, and then this is a simulated patient here, um, so this is, uh, we have a lot of patient volunteers who come in uh, and work with students in the skills lab. Uh, and let them practice so that so now having perfected how to do the mechanics of a blood pressure this student here is now learning how to do it and explain to the patient what she's a simulated patient what she's doing so that uh, that's making the skill more complex and then the next stage would be doing that with a real patient in the ward um, so there's lots of support and encouragement in learning in a safe environment next slide So I've been through these, um, some, most of these skills already, but um, so you can, you can read these here and we've, I've talked about them already, but an important one here is management and leadership skills. So, and then students need that to drive, to both drive when they become doctors themselves, the changes that are going to occur inevitably in medicine as we make progress, but also to thrive on. So we try, we expect our students to, um, to start doing this as students and to begin to learn these skills. So we do have high expectations of our students, so there's no point in pretending that we don't. We do have high expectations of our students. We have a statement of expectations that we make explicit right at the beginning of the program. Um, and that is to help develop through the program all of these other skills as well as gaining the knowledge and clinical skills needed for being a doctor. So management and leadership, lifelong learning skills, they'll need to be adaptable to the changes in practice um, and of course an international perspective which our international students start with an advantage over our local students simply because they come from another country um, but they also are very important in enriching the program from, because they come from different countries. So give our whole program and all the students in it uh, a global focus. Next slide. 